I'm just putting it out there. Chris is a moron, he's, ladies and gentlemen. He's a dumb, <laughs> boulder-punching moron, and I will not have <laughs> Resident Evil, uh, what, five spoilers? I don't care. Chris was yeah. on steroids at the time, and he punched a boulder. And it was a bad time in his life. It was a bad time. And I'm not gonna... It was, it, was, it was a bad time in all of our lives, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey everybody, this is Kevin, and before we start today, I want to say thank you to everyone who has been with us on this journey so far. Also, I would like to give a shout out to the following podcast that I fully recommend you checking out. Video Gems, a podcast hosted by two video essayists who each week have a guest on to discuss YouTube videos. It's charming and belligerent at the same time, so worth checking out. Quest and Show, an actual play podcast hosted by Hot Cider, in which a new guest joins him in a one-on-one -on -one tabletop session to solve a problem in the kingdom of Trottolera. And last but not least, Oops All Monsters, in which two guys from wild and wacky West Virginia discuss monsters, cryptids, and more from books, TV, movies, gaming, both tabletop and video. All of these podcasts can be found on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasting goodness. Today is the last episode of the Resident Evil Umbrella Conspiracy series, and starting next week we will be going weekly with Halo The Fall of Reach. But enough of my blathering, on with the show. Hey there everybody, welcome back to Pixel Lit episode 5 and the final episode, no matter what. Uh, no matter what. No matter what, of uh, Resident Evil, uh, the Umbrella... Chron I can't remember. Chronicles? No, Conspiracy. The Umbrella Conspiracy. conspiracy. The, the Umbrella, umbrella conspiracy. Chrono Trigger. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the secret of Resident Mana. <laughs> Here we are. The, the Chrono Umbrella. <laughs> the Chrono Umbrella. So we start out with chapter it's got a 15. Great soundtrack. Yeah. It's got a it's got a nice square 1990s, you know, square soft sound to it. Yeah. With uh oh, just the best. Just the best. And just not the nice best. little pixel art and and it's it's warm and it's cozy and it's basically what uh Resident Evil could have been if it was more <laughs> of like a direct uh directly inspired by uh its predecessors predecessor Sweet Home. Could have been a nice, yeah. warm, cozy pixel art game with oh, terrifying man. zombies. Yeah, why not? Damn why it. not? Sweet home. That's something I haven't thought about in a while. A long time. Long time. <laughs> okay. Damn so it. Barry had been gone for too damn long. Anytime Barry's gone is too long, in my opinion. Yeah, even if it's just for, for seconds, you start to yeah. miss his his ginger beard and and his his face. His, his, his firm family man body. His firm, his firm dad bod. Let's dad let's be bod. Honest. There you go. That's that's what that's what Barry has rocking. Well, what yeah. else but a dad bod could could knock down a a uh, a bolted door? Um, indeed, indeed. But Barry is gone. <laughs> uh, he has chase after Wester, Wesker, uh, and uh, Jill is concerned. She is growing concerned. And she is beginning to hypothesize, right? She's like, she's really, she's really deep into the conspiracy thinking now. Um, and she is, is, knows that there are, there is a traitor and it's either Richard Aiken, Forrest Speyer and Albert Wesker. Now, somehow, I, I guess this is, this is actually kind of neat because Jill, because of the way we have that split perspective type of thing. Um, yeah. Jill does not realize that Richard and Forrest best characters ever, but they're very, very dead. Super dead, like too dead, in my opinion. <laughs> There's just a lot of a lot of deadness with them. A lot of deadness. You know, to the reader, we know it's Albert Wesker. And we also know uh, she doesn't even bring up Barry. That's the crazy thing is she's just like, it's not Barry, of course. And we're like, well, obviously, we know. obviously, of course, we know that Barry is is, you know, dumb and has been duped by Albert <laughs> into <Yeah>. thinking <laughs> Barry, you, a, you, you a, freaking idiot you, you fool you, you had that close but no potato moment last episode and uh, yeah. anyway so she's uh, she's walking around it's now instead of like the halls hallways that we have in the mansion we got the the corridors underground and the hallways yeah. and the corridors are very similar in that there's a lot of walking around Phil uh, what does she run into she runs into well. Let's just let's just go straight to it because our author uh, is clearly fond of the the the, the nasty, and I, I, I'm I'm here for it. So uh, here we go. It was huge, shaped like a man, but the resemblance stopped there. So a Ken doll. 
Naked but sexless, its entire muscular body was covered with a pebbled, amphibious skin shaded a dark green. It was hunched over so that its impossibly long arms almost touched the floor, both its hands and feet tipped with thick, brutal claws. Tiny, light-colored eyes peered out at her from a flat reptilian skull. Uh, so it's Mitch McConnell. <laughs> yeah, it's Mitch McConnell. Or, um, I mean, I think it's Mitch, and then the other ones are re- the rest of the, the, the GOP leadership. But this one is definitely right. Mitch. Um, uh, yeah, so this tell. is, this is, this is a, this is a hunter. Um, and I don't believe, I, I, I think, I think you kind of have to piece that together yourself. Um, right. They never, he, he references the hunters, but yeah, at no Wesker point, references them and yeah. he says, oh, the hunters <laughs> must be out by now or something along those lines. But, right. uh, he never says, you know, he never pops up in the corner of the screen and says, that's a hunter. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Remember when I mentioned the hunters before? That's one of them right now. Don't mind my old timey accent. That's actually how, how Wesker. Now. This is actually how Wesker really sounds. The the rest of his um his speaking patterns is just a put on. He, he right, actually right. sounds like he actually sounds like a, a vaudeville star of, yeah. of, of oh the you old didn't want to date me, huh? Jokes on you, zombie date. I'm gonna shoot you in the head now. Ho ho. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh, he just said uh he just started singing and with his cane and top hat off stage right just spinning it and curling his mustache he really is a character that wesker so she's she's Did like you? shooting the ever-loving crap out of it she she does not learn the lesson that so many of us learn when playing resident evil run just run just run like crazy hell and uh, she just shoots the ever living crap out of she it just until she runs out of bullets. So much ammo. She wastes so much ammo. In so this, much in this one scene. Um, and you know she's going to need it in a few chapters. Um, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, she finally, you know, just wastes all her ammo, but kills it and uh, kills rip, it. Rip Mitch McConnell. Um, yep, and yep. Uh, um. There could be more of them. And she runs. And then the, she does the thing that she should have done in the first place. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. She, she finally gets it. the message. She kills it. She kills it. And then she runs away, which is. Right. It's just. Yeah. That's not. Uh, not usually how it's done. I'm not going to criticize because I wasn't there. But generally, it's the opposite. So we have a scene change. And I got to be honest. I really. Oh boy, I was I was bored with the Chris Rebecca pl- plot line at this point. <laughs> I have I a was, lot of feelings with I have all a, this. Yeah. I have a lot of feelings with the whole Plant Forty Two thing. Uh, oh. it's it's just first of all, it's like a it's like they talk so much about the goddamn plant, right? And then they, they kill talk it. It up. They talk it up so much, and then they kill it without yeah. ever going in the room. No, it, they basically they talk about like uh, they talk about how it's there and it's dangerous as a man eating killer plant. They set up this military grade herbicide. And then later on, they're going to kill it. And it, I mean, we'll get to that. But yeah, it, this whole thing, this whole subplot with Chris and Rebecca and the plant is such a bummer and i have questions and we'll get to it but i just like yeah i'm glad you brought that up because i'm glad i wasn't the only one who felt that way <laughs> it did it, it did creep me out leading up to it before i realized that nothing was going to be like here this is i think this is a pretty good passage here it says uh there was a faint whispering coming from inside the room a subtle sense of movement and chris realized that it was coming from the sickly plant matter itself the walls quivering in a weird optical illusion as the draping tendrils crept and grew. And I, I liked that. I thought that was yeah. like nice and effectively creepy. And I think it's because I've been like heavy duty uh, gardening lately. Like we've been mm. growing a lot of stuff and there is, you know, if you're not used to, I didn't grow up growing things and we've been growing a bunch of stuff from seed. And when you wake up in the morning, you go check on things and you see that this plant is like doubled in size or something like there. It can be a little weird. It's, it's very cool and gratifying, but the whole idea of a killer plant now is creepy to me. It's great. Plants are, (laughs) plants are extremely creepy. 
Um, yeah. And that is that is my take on plants. They <laughs> notify each other of 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 uh, predators. Um, yeah. Yes, they do. Uh, and some of them they kill each other. They have self defense systems. They're, they have self defense systems. They can they yeah. can move around if they certain plants move around using their their roots. No, sir, I don't like it. They really bother no. me. In like, oh, it's just a plant. It's a nice little plant. I mean, like, uh, I think, I think, uh, what's his name? M Night Shyamalan was onto something with the happening. <laughs> right. He was yeah. onto something. It was a terrible yeah. movie, and it has some of the the best worst line reads I you've ever oh heard. My God. But the idea that the plants could just suddenly up and start set, uh, like making a like uh, an allergen that makes everybody want to kill themselves. I was like, yo, that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's that's pretty cool and terrifying. Yeah, um, like I, I I know a lot of people gave it. You know, people gave that movie a lot of shit as they should. Um, but whenever they would talk about, oh, and what the bad guys are the plants. That's so lame. It's like, no, 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 no. Let's not fuck with that. Like that actually <laughs> could be great. That's the part of this uh, that slaps. Like, right. It's, right. <laughs> it's, it's actually Mark Wahlberg, um, talking to the old lady that that's <laughs> God. No, ma'am. We're not. Oh, me? No. <laughs> Um, how is he like simultaneously one of the most terrifying men alive and one of the stupidest i don't know there's and i don't mean stupid in intelligence although i don't think he has the highest iq can, in the world he but. really contains uh he contains multitudes let's leave he it does there. mark mark Wahlberg contains multitudes you heard it here <laughs> <laughs> my god it's full of stars so they uh they they spend a whole lot of time talking about killing the plant. They kill the plant. Uh, it's really like never a threat. It's just in the way, even though it's yeah. the, possibly the most threatening thing in the house. Chekhov is rolling in his grave regarding oh, yeah. this entire scene. <laughs> well, and that's the, and that's the thing. And it goes on like it goes into the next chapter. And and I think I'm going to look ahead here. It they no, do, they're it, telling you now it does. They do kill the plant, obviously. They kill uh, the plan. Uh, it takes a. It takes. It takes two chapters. Yeah, it takes two chapters. They've already. St- they started it in the previous chapter, in chapter fourteen. They finally kill it in um, chapter seventeen, I think. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it, and right now they're just talking about it. They're just talking, just talking about, about killing it. They're this, building up this plant. This and one. It's such a bummer. This one scene in chapter fifteen is like six pages long of just talking about killing the damn plant um right. so finally we leave them they they haven't in real time they haven't killed it yet um, no and no, it's uh, still around it's still around barry has come back to where jill was supposed to be waiting and finds that jill is no longer waiting there because they're stars and they do that <laughs> yeah that's that's apparently part of their training as we pointed out <laughs> um and that's just Barry, stupid training. Barry uh, has a moment to himself, just Which mourning the loss. Yeah, he mourns the loss of his his good buddy Enrico. Tie one on. Have a smoke. Relax. Have a smoke. Relax. You know what do you what do you think Barry smokes? Barry? Oh, Marlboro Lights. Marlboro Without Lights. A question in my mind. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Barry smokes Marlboro Lights. Um, he he used to smoke Marlboro Reds, uh, but he's under the impression that. Uh, the lights are better for him because now he's got kids and stuff. Right. Uh, and he doesn't want to quit, but uh, he's like, I better smoke these light cigarettes. These are better for me, even though that is not the case at all. He's like, they um, got the filter. I mean, like the filter's not right, really doing right. anything. <laughs> I'm doing these. These cigarettes are all white. Therefore, they couldn't possibly be doing anything bad. They could possibly be killing me. No, um, not even. And a then little. he has a he has a he has a light cough apropos of nothing. Right. And uh, extinguishes it under his shoe and and carries on when Jill finally that it does. That doesn't happen in the book. Everybody. We're just <laughs> we're just riffing. He actually is not smoking. Um, this was a book aimed at at teenagers in the 1990s. Of course, they wouldn't be smoking. <laughs> right. They left that to cartoon camels in those days. Yeah, exactly. Um, this book had a had a was checked over by Dare before it, went, it was published. 
That's also not Probably. true. I'm sorry. I'm I'm just. It might have you know. been. I mean, might that was been. the age of it, wasn't it? It might have <laughs> been. Except you know how you know it didn't. It didn't have a dare stamp it on it. It did not dare. have a dare sticker on the cover. They needed. They needed everyone to know where they were at all times. You know, yeah. they're the opposite of the CIA. Right. Dare. We're everywhere, and we are. We're everywhere. Entirely we'll ineffective. Show you. <laughs> um Barry hears Jill's gunfire because she's at that time killing a hunter and he runs into a hunter himself and he right. manages to like pretty much take it down in like one shot or something. Yeah, far less dramatic than her one off with it. He has a big old Colt that he just, you know, a magnum that he just carries around. Um, and even though it might be impractical in literally every other situation, it is very good at putting down these hunter things. You're glad he brought it. At first, you're like, come on, you got to be the one guy who's special with his special gun. And you're like, oh, no, no, that's that's probably fine. <laughs> it's probably fine that you have that. It's it's a OK. Chapter 16. And Jill Which I've is- got questions right off the bat. With yes. This one. Did, is she? Jill, the way they're describing it, she appears to, she finds the corpse of a, a giant dead spider. Yeah. Um, has, have spiders been a thing in this? Did I miss that? Spiders had not yet been a thing. They had not mentioned spiders. Okay. Okay. So she just, so this, this is a dead sp- spider got killed off camera, basically. Right. Somebody killed a okay. spider off camera. Uh, and I think we're supposed to assume that it's Wesker. Okay, yeah, that, I did get in that impression. I, I will say I did get that impression, but it was just kind of like, come on, man. Like, who was in a, you know, spiders? That's always, in a, I like spiders, but that's a, that's always an effective bad guy. People hate hearing about spiders. Why, why is that off camera? Right. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it, it's weird that they, they kind of just let Jill, like, you know, it's like, oh, the spiders. Yeah. It's almost like it's a, yes, the spider room. Moving on. Right. <laughs> Ah, right. This, yeah, exactly. It's just she just basically she just looks at the camera and goes, "Huh? It's like the game. It's like the game." Moving yeah. on. Um, Moving on. Exactly. And then we forget uh, about it. And and there's a there's a little quote there's a little thing uh, I I highlighted uh, <laughs> because she is uh, oh and here's where we get to the 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 Indiana Jones sequence. She says to herself, I can blow away zombies and monsters with the best of them. Show me a spider and I lose my freaking mind. And right. <laughs> what's funny is like that kind of rings true. I feel like there would be people yeah. who would be able to deal deal with a zombie better than a spider. I, I feel like, yeah, I actually I totally agree. I feel like there are plenty of those people in the world. That like zombies show up and they're like, okay, we got to do what we got to do to take care of the zombies. But even after a zombie apocalypse, they see a daddy long legs and they're like, spider, good. Just tense you know, it up. Says, it says a lot that, you know, I can name like 20 zombie movies off the top of my head. Um, but I can only really name one horror film uh, centered around spiders. Eight legged freaks. Oh, uh, that's two then. I was going to say arachnophobia. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Arachnophobia was. A, I haven't seen that one in a thousand years. Yeah. Uh, I, I just remember it. him shooting the spider at the end. That was the final moment. <laughs> it just turns into like a pure comedy once John Goodman's yeah. character shows up. <laughs> so weird. It's a weird movie. <laughs> it's got so many different like the way it's structured is just so odd. Uh, and and if you haven't seen it, basically halfway through the movie, this town has become overrun with spiders that can kill people in like a single bite. Um, halfway through the movie, this exterminator played by John Goodman shows up. <laughs> basically just there's these these strange moments of comedy <laughs> of him chasing down and killing spiders <laughs> that uh are just brilliant the the main character is played by um uh jeff daniels as a man who is suffering from arachnophobia and he kind of has to overcome it in order to save the day so to speak but it, it's <laughs> um it's yeah, basically it's movie. just like jaws um, in that sense it's just it's basically all the same just level. like jaws Oh yeah, it's it's the same movie, same quality, same everything. Jaws but spiders. Jaws. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so this is where um, Jill accidentally triggers a trap. Yes. And basically what happens is um, she didn't measure the little bag of sand properly when she was stealing uh-huh. the idol. And just, now, yeah. it's, now so, there's a, it's just now rookie. there's a boulder chasing her. It, it is. Like, yeah, man. It's just amazing. Like e- there's just this moment of self-realization where Jill thinks to herself, geez, it must have taken them years to set all this up. And right. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm almost impressed. This is great. <laughs> a lot of money went into this. And there's just this great little thought to herself where uh, won't going to make it going to die is just written all in lowercase. Uh, yeah. No spacing. <laughs> Yeah. And when I got to that, I, I had to cackle out loud <laughs> because of the way it was written. She really uh, has a rough go of it with traps. <laughs> she does. She does more than anyone else. There's no question about she gets, it. She gets attacked by the crows. Uh, she gets uh, nearly squashed by the ceiling and killed by a massive boulder. Back to the Chris Rebecca story. And yeah. Uh, they're in the basement um, looking for the ingredients they need for the V-Jolt. Yeah, the the basement is flooded, basically. The basement is flooded because there's a, a giant shark swimming around the basement. <laughs> yeah, you know, like you do. <laughs> like you do, like you have. This is actually where it becomes more and more like Jaws. <laughs> yes, it actually is like more like Jaws. S.D. Perry used the descriptor black soulless eyes set above a yeah. pointed grin. Like a doll's eyes. Like, like a doll's eyes. <laughs> this is, by the way, this is the moment that I considered doing zombie shark do 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 do. Uh, but we're a new podcast, and I want us all to be friends. So I changed my mind. Um, so Chris uh, swims away from it. He he manages to find some key, the keys in his vest, and open the door, the like a control room door. After a, a scary moment with the shark, yeah, gives the shark a, a kick on the nose for good measure. He his boot connecting solidly with the shark's fleshy snout, deflecting right. it from the opening, and in a flash he was on his feet. Which is weird because like I'm trying to visualize it. And and wouldn't the room that he opened the door to have flooded when he opened the door? <laughs> yeah, it, it it should be flooded, theoretically. But Theoretically. Theoretically. So he's in a control room. He finds a, uh, a lever that says emergency drainage system. <laughs> right there. Just, <laughs> just sitting there. Like a neon sign. <laughs> and he says to himself, why didn't you got to be kidding me? Why didn't anyone pull this thing the second the tank broke? And that's like, that's like a meta commentary. Right. That is a f- <laughs> fucking solid question. To be honest. It's not a, it's he, the, like they make he, he kind of explains it away himself with like, well, they're scientists and they wouldn't want to kill their their specimen, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, eh, yeah, I don't know, man. Like <laughs> these are these are real Prometheus level scientists here. <laughs> right. Right. I'm going to stick my face over the alien egg <laughs> yeah for science so, for science for science <laughs> yeah and it just it never works out it never works out uh the yeah they they could have made a prequel uh book about this and we could have seen just like these guys are just like whipping each other with towels and shit like while the shark's thrashing around it would have been just, it would have been fun if, if it if it came with like a laugh track um right like every every time you turn the page, it's like with those uh, birthday cards that have, play a song when you open them. There's like one of those chips uh, in between right. every page and you turn the page yeah. and it's ha ha, ha 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 one of them every now and then it's yakety sax. You know, it's just <laughs> it's that kind of interactive experience. I think that's my best uh, best idea ever. I should probably get on making that. A You're onto something. You need to at least trademark it. books with laugh tracks dot com. Right. It's just coming. to remind you where it's where it's funny. <laughs> to remind the you joke where it's is funny. always on the on the turned page. <laughs> so so um, he drains the tank. Yep. And he walks back through the door, opening very carefully. And he hear- hears the frantic wet thumps of a very big fish trying to swim through the air. And this is the most psychotic part of, yeah. of Chris in the entire book. 
Chris. Yeah, this is about as as cold as he gets, really. Yeah. So <laughs> Chris grinned, thinking that he should probably feel pity for the helpless creature and hoping instead that it died a long, agonizing death. Bite me, he whispered. Like, yeah. first of all, Chris, first of all, what what did the shark actually do to you other than do what sharks do? It was being a shark, Chris. <laughs> It wasn't even it wouldn't have even needed to have been a zombie shark. It wasn't. Yeah, it was like it's like <laughs> just it's a hungry like, animal. It's not like the dogs, which are acting out, outside of their behavior, right? Uh, of normal behavior. It's just a sh- right. it's, it's just a, literally a shark. And you yeah. went into the shark's water and the shark tried to bite you as sharks <laughs> do. And then you wished upon it a slow, painful death. Right. And that's the thing. And that's the thing. There have been plenty of times that something's tried to kill him and stuff like that. And he's still like kind of been like, that used to be a person, you know, or he he didn't have snarky remarks for the killer dogs. But the but the killer shark, that's where he drew the line. The shark who is just being a shark. He's like, no, fuck that thing in particular. Fuck him. (laughs) Bite me, which is right up there with Arnie's classic stick around from a predator line. Like that's right up there. That's pure nineties, eighties cheese. And yeah. I, I, I respect it. I respect You're here it. for it. So finally we get back to Wesker and he's taking pleasure in killing more people. Yeah. We're back. We're back to Wesker doing what Wesker does, which is uh, just kind of making his way through the lab, making his way downtown. Um, right. Right. <laughs> He's humming that to himself as he goes. He's humming himself that to himself as he goes. Just often people left and right. Killing killing people he used to know and going, oh, it's weird. We had tacos that night. Like just, yeah. just executing everybody. And he said he thinks to himself the way he'd handled Barry, finding the wolf metal in the tunnels, even shooting Ellen Smith in the face, had given him a momentary sense of accomplishment. A feeling we that needed he to was bring up con- Ellen again. <laughs> He even brings up Ellen again. This guy is like literally the definition of an incel. Right. (laughs) He is looking for he's 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 looking for a good Reddit board. He can he can work on. He is he is Wesker has is is on 4chan every night. (laughs) He's in the green text. It's like, you uh, guys aren't going to believe I finally got to shoot that self-righteous bitch in the face. Whoa, okay there, champ. It's like, oh, don't worry. She was a zombie. It's like, oh, well, that's fine then. He brings up the mesh monkeys, which was weird. I I don't remember them. I don't. Yeah, that one. And I just don't like the term mesh monkeys. That's also a very troubling term. And it's an uh, upsetting term. It's very upsetting. <laughs> it, it, it it has a weird feeling in your ear when you. Yes. When you say it's it. not. It's not a comfortable not couple comfortable. of words. It's one word by itself in in either of those words by themselves. Perfectly fine. Perfectly good. Put them together. Don't feel good. Doesn't Mesh feel monkeys. right. It's it's like a it's like a moist. Um, yeah. If you added it that it would be an atomic bomb of a word or a phrase. <laughs> moist mesh monkeys. Moist mesh monkeys. The moist mesh monkeys mandibles masticated melons messily ah no nailed it now is this now he does mention tyrant here is this the yeah is this the first time he mentions tyrant or did i miss that from before i think it's the first time he's mentioned tyrant as as you know just down here he also his thought process ties in ada um, in the yes. future, John Howe had set the system up months ago using his name and the name of his girlfriend, Ada, as access keys. So yeah, I thought so that was we get a nice. An Ada Wong, we get an uh, Ada Wong uh, reference. I get, thought that yeah, was a nice little nice Ar- Resident egg. Evil 2 Easter egg um, yeah. in here because Ada is, I believe, uh, part of what she's doing is looking for John um, right. in Resident Evil right. 2. Uh, not the only thing she's doing. <laughs> falling in love with Leon. Mm. Whoa. And. That pretty much brings chapter 16 to an end. Yes. He he just he kind of he kind of yeah, he he unlocks the lab doors and thinks evil thoughts. It's mostly an exposition it's, dump and we're like, "Oh, yes, evil thoughts, evil thoughts." Yeah. By the yeah, way, rah, mesh monkeys. By the way, mesh monkeys and tyrants. 
<laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Enjoy this. <laughs> yeah. And then we get to chapter 17. Um, and Jill has arrived in she's arrived in a separate area it was like an un, it was like a military it's like a military complex it's yeah it's, I, I liked this i like they made a point she says that you know she found herself basically in what she's it's like more military industrial and less gothic right uh and and i think that was kind of a nice touch because honestly you know they hit a lot of resident evil tropes throughout this book and that's one of them. Like, I always know that we're coming to the end of the game. When we get to when a lab, doing military yeah, base type thing. Exactly. <laughs> less less haunted house, more, yeah, military science-y stuff. Uh, to uh, borrow the phrase that S.D. Perry used, a utilitarian's bleak paradise. Right. right. Which we're, is a nice turn of phrase. Is, I like that. I like that. It's a really nice turn of phrase. But like, that's a good way yeah. to describe it. <laughs> So, yeah, she begins kind of fight, walking her way through the lab. And now that she is, Jill is basically the first of the characters, aside from Wesker, to reach the quote unquote end game uh, stage, which is right, which is always the laboratory area of, of every Resident Evil. Uh, she opened the door and her hope faded as the dry, dusty smell of long dead flesh hit her. She stepped out onto the cement walkway that led over a flight of descending stairs a metal railing circling the path. At the top of the steps was a crumpled zombie, so emaciated and shriveled that it appeared mummified. So yeah, her her hope was like, oh, maybe there's no zombies. And then, whoops, there's zombies. And zombies. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it always goes. You anticipate that's, no zombies, boom, zombies. That's how it always goes. The other thing Every that I thought, single time. Uh, I thought was kind of neat was the fact that she realized that, that there's not going to be any traps in this area. She is now... She is now outside of the the zone of traps. You know? Right. I, I found that to be really funny because it's like she finds the big red shiny candy like button and 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 she just goes, it won't be a trap there. We're past that. It just she just kind of just tells <laughs> tells the audience we're done with traps for now. I know I've gotten I know I've been wrong before, <laughs> but I know but, traps because I've, yeah, at this I've, point, I have triggered all of them. <laughs> yes. I, I always I'm great at triggering them. She is, and this won't be won't be one of them. Basically the wily e. coyote of of the stars team. Pretty much. This point. And and I have to give it to her. She ends up being right. She hits the button, no hesitation, and we just get this and, and it's a, a projector, isn't it? Something yeah, yeah. And, a, and just a key. And she gets a key. Shows right up. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. She gets a she gets a key and uh there's files and they're and she says they're too thick and ponderous to spend time sorting through, a.k.a. boring. <laughs> they looked boring. Right. <laughs> right. And she kind of. Yeah, she 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 basically sets us up for end game here because she she basically in her monologues that like this is where everyone's been heading and therefore she's she anticipates I'm going to find out who the traitor is. I'm about right. to find out. Not not I'm hunting him down now, but it. I mean, everyone's going to be here, so I'll figure it out through process of I elimination. I will figure it out. She kind of chills out in that room, and we cut to Chris and Rebecca. Oh, my God. It's been like five chapters go. about Plant 42, this, and they finally plant. They finally fucking kill it. Jesus yeah, Christ. So, they, yeah, they drain <laughs> because because he drained the water where the shark shark was. It's also drained this room where like the plant bulb root is uh, and that's, it was drinking that water. And so they destroy it with this super herbicide and, uh, and then they go into the room where the plants meant to be. And it's just a puddle of goo. We never even get like, they don't even like see through a window at this thing, you know, where it's like, and it's petals had turned and hardened into claws and terrible thorns and blah, blah. No, we never even have that. It's just now because they got the root melted into goo. And it is so disappointing. It's like in this room is Audrey too. You're never going right. to, you're never going to see her. <laughs> you're never going to see her. You're never going to hear her sing. You're never going to hear just, her sing. Poor plan for you. Don't get to you. No mean green mother. We never it's got just, to. It's such a bummer. And, and I have to ask because you've played this one. Um, yeah. 
because is this how it goes down in the game? Because the way I thought about it, knowing this is based on a game, I was like, I can see where what probably would have happened is there would have been a room with a plant in it and a auto death yeah, uh, function there unless I, you and so you've got to solve the puzzle and it dies. You know, and I'm trying to remember and I believe plant 42 for the most part is basically it's more or less a trap rather than an enemy. Uh-huh. Um, right that you you have to solve basically you have to solve the v-jolt puzzle uh in order to progress that being said every other trap in this book was handled in about a half a page and yeah. the plant 42 was it took three over the course of three chapters in order yeah, to actually it's simultaneously it's simultaneously too much and not enough yeah yeah like they give us three or four chapters building up this plant it feels like they got way ahead uh of everybody else and 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 they had to hold them up yeah you know while everyone else kind of caught up and and then by the time we get to a part like this it's just kind of like okay well just kill it we've only got 20 pages left we got to wrap this up right you know it just it that's there have been a lot of weird things in this book which i can excuse for a lot of reasons this this is the part of the book that really bummed me out. I wanted man eating plant. I wanted killer plant. Damn it! No, me too. And I, I, what's hilarious is that um, they kill it and they realize that the plant wasn't blocking their way after all. Yeah, it wasn't even blocking out their. <laughs> they didn't have to do it at all. <laughs> like I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Um, right, right. Um, but they, they find, do. But they, they do. They, they yeah. find security protocols. Right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So that that basically mention Tyrant and they most importantly implicate Wesker as the uh, the traitor, basically. So yeah. they, they know the truth now. So that was that was what all of that was for, I guess. Right. I mean, it's like, it, look, you're going to find out Wesker's the bad guy. Don't worry. You don't need. Yeah, you don't, you need, don't need to to, to have this big of a build up now, Jill and. Well, Jill has not found out yet, but uh, Chris and Rebecca know, um, and Jill is is going to find out soon enough. But yeah, it it, it felt like um, sometimes um, you have to be economical with the story that you're telling, and this seemed like it was a bit of a splurge. <laughs> yeah, it just yeah, it didn't it didn't feel. It, this 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 was this part was disappointing. Like disappointing. I don't know. Yeah. It felt weird. It just it it just didn't feel like it felt like she didn't have enough. The author didn't have enough for Chris and Rebecca to do while everyone else was doing their own thing. Right. Um. I don't know. It's just a, it, it felt like a, a little license could have been taken. You know, you right. could have given us a fight or something, even if it doesn't exist in the game. Exactly. Anything really. Yeah. yeah even just- if you showed us what was going to happen. Like if you show a, a zombie, like wander into the room and, and, and get the plant rip- rips it to shreds. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Give us an idea of why this is something that should be scary maybe instead of even, just, well, it's a giant plant. Maybe even a hunter accidentally gets in the room and they sure. they see the hunter. And because we've just seen how tough the hunters are and then it kills right. the hunter with ease. And I'm like, that would have been like, Oh shit. Yeah, show us exactly show how much of a monster. Exactly this thing is. how much of a monster instead of telling us for that long how you're going to kill it. Yeah. So that that happened. <laughs> speaking speaking of monsters, uh, we we cut to Wesker. He's back. He's back, guys. He's got his honeydew list from out of space. Uh, I, I loved I loved it. The first thing it said is his uh, everything was done. Wesker stepped into the elevator that led back to level three, running through his his checklist as he lowered the outer gate and slid the inner one closed. Samples collected, discs erased, powers reconnected, tyrant support off. Like, it's just his. He's his got little, this list. OK. And you know what? I'm doing a it, good job. Jurassic Park would not have happened if it was Wesker instead of instead of Dennis Nedry. I got to you know? I got to say that like. Wesker is is on it and Nedry was 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 a slob and he was he did not have he didn't he didn't he didn't have his his stuff together. But Wesker, I feel like would have pulled that off. He would have gotten the samples and gotten out of there. Yeah. Yeah. He 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 does have his for the most part. He does seem to have his shit together. He is effective. He is effective. He is effective. 
That's not going to stop him from spoiler warning getting killed, but <laughs> right, no, <laughs> um, killed. I say in quotation marks, um, right, <laughs> as we all know. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, he he had said the mistake had cost Umbrella millions of dollars and it killed the researchers who had created it. Feels like millions is like a bit of an understatement. Yeah. I would. This yeah. seems like a pricey mistake. I, this is this is a lot pretty of money. Big. This is pretty big. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like when you just say, when you say millions, it's like single digit million. You know, like right. <laughs> this this is this is at least a hundred million dollars worth of fuck up. Oh, Prob- big time. Probably more. <laughs> Right. Yeah, you can't oversell at this point. You can't oversell. <laughs> Your you could have dropped billion in there and I wouldn't have blinked an yeah. eye. I'd be like, this is a lot. This is Yeah. You know, there's it's a city under a city. Like <laughs> I, yeah, lots of lab science stuff around. Sure. Sure. That's a cool billion. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's easily. Easily. Wesker's walking around and uh he notices that Jill Valentine is still alive and he's yes, he does. He realizes he had underestimated the master of unlocking. He had underestimated the master of unlocking, which Um, you shouldn't do, which you shouldn't do. If she was that good, the MA twos might not kill her. And she had effectively just blocked him from triggering the system. This is a this is a big complication. (laughs) And, you know, Wesker just whenever Wesker gets frustrated, he dips right back down into the misogyny. Um, Oh, yeah. Big time. (laughs) To quote, uh, I am in control. Nothing is happening here that I can't handle. This is my game. Wink. My rules. Wink. And I will accomplish my mission without any interference from that little thief bitch. Wow, Albert. <laughs> wow. I'm not going to have my plan ruined by a girl. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> With their dumb vaginas and, and tea parties. Well, he's just kind of like observing Barry shows up as well. And Wesker raised his weapon coolly, ready to fire when Barry stepped into view and then lowered it thoughtfully. After a moment, a slow grin spread across his face. And it's basically like the Grinch grin where he like just looks into (laughs) the camera and it just like (laughs) curls up and around. Right. (laughs) Yeah, the... Terrible, awful idea. You're a mean one, <laughs> Captain Wesker. <laughs> Just, I have a terrible idea. I'll threaten his family again. Oh, ah. that one. Okay, so it's the same idea. So it's the same idea. That's what you think? You okay, just keep cool. All right, fine. Keep doing the same idea. That's fine, but okay. okay. <laughs> And that brings us to chapter 18. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. What happens in chapter 18? Chapter 18, we get we get Jill in a boiler room of some kind, and she's attacked by terrible, awful clawed things. Um, I got here we go. I like this is another one of those descriptions that I really enjoyed. Uh, there were two of the creatures overhead, squat terrible things with vicious curving hooks instead of hands. One of them dropped down suddenly, hanging by clawed feet to swipe at her with a bladed arm. And I just, I, I you know, I played the crap out of uh, out of uh, Resident Evil 2. And that put me in the mind of a liquor. So I was really enjoying that. Yeah, this is, I believe this is her, the description of the, the mesh monkey. <laughs> yes, the mesh monkeys. Yes. So to speak. And, and uh, just again, it doesn't get any better. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and now this one she actually does have the right idea she sees a bunch of them and she just starts running like hell she's like no nope, right. just absolutely not and uh she escapes and comes across a bloodied berry uh which is my favorite uh hangover drink <laughs> uh, to be fair it's uh i know you're not a you're not a drinker kevin uh so a lot of our audience they, they probably know what a bloody berry is but for your benefit a bloody berry. You take a bottle of vodka, add some V8, a dash of Montreal steak seasoning, and then you threaten someone's family. <laughs> uh, it's, of course, of course. Yeah, and it just just melts that hangover away. That makes and, a lot uh, of sense. Yeah, yeah. It all it all holds up. You know, nothing nothing gets a little ginger uh, hair the, of the, the f- dog. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nothing gets the fog out of your eyes quite like bodily harm to someone's children. Uh, it really does work. Um, so <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> he claims to have found the main lab and he wants to take her there. And based on where we saw him last, it does feel a touch suspicious. Yeah. Uh, have to say, uh, hmm. Hmm. But Lead she goes the with him. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Nothing bad could happen here. Nothing bad and, could uh, happen. And then we cut to Chris and Rebecca, who are trying to figure out how to kill the plant again. No, not they're not doing that. <laughs> they uh, decided they 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 decided to collect some plant samples and are now right. re uh, re trying to recreate the plant. Uh, right on a smaller scale, so that they scale, can kill it. A second so they time. can kill it a second time. No, just right. as boring. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, the the Chris and Rebecca thing really fell off the. All fell off once they left the mansion. Just as boring. They're they're in the tunnels that everybody yeah. else had was in like thirty minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, and they're yeah, and they're outside a, a locked door that ought to lead to a helipad. Uh, and Chris, being Chris, wants to split up. Of course, again, of course. Rebecca showing some level of intelligence is like absolutely not. This sounds like um, a bad idea. Right. And then we get this quote, which um, I adored. Uh, no, for all we know, Wesker already killed the other stars and is looking to finish the job. If we're the last ones, we can't risk both of us getting ambushed. Somebody has to survive and tell people about Umbrella. I'm sorry, but it's the only way. Chris, uh, strategist of the year. Uh, <laughs> like, if, if we're separated, there will be there will be way they can better of a chance that they can one of us won't get ambushed. Right. Because <laughs> the only way for us to be ambushed is if there are both of us together. Exactly. <laughs> like, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> OK, Chris, that All makes right, sense. Sure. 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 <laughs> bye, I guess. Again, bye. Uh, so, yeah. So he goes off. To be a man, and uh, he's a man. Back, he is, and you can tell. You can tell, and so it, you forgive a lot because he's a man, right? Uh, <laughs> and then it cuts to Barry's point of view as he basically just leads Jill as this lamb to the slaughter uh, on her way uh, to, you know, he's he's like it's it's not even subtle. Like uh, she says, is something wrong? And yeah. it says he pulled the gate open and raised the mesh outer door, an excuse to look away. I, yeah, something's wrong, he said quietly. But now's not the time. Let's just get this over with. Which is like, well, let's just go get you nice and killed. Dum -da -dum -da -dum. <laughs> <laughs> let's just get this over with, and then I'll, yeah. I'll tell it to your yeah. grave. <laughs> right. I'll t I'll explain it to you when you're dead. Um. So, yeah, Barry just leads her right into uh, one of those ambushes that Chris is afraid of, um, which is <laughs> yeah. like that's the thing is like, Chris, for all the dumb, you, you, you wasted like 45 minutes killing a plant that wasn't protecting anything. And now you right. want to split up because you're afraid of ambushes. Meanwhile, Jill is doing all the work and is actually getting ambushed. <laughs> Yeah, I can see why we followed Chris after these games continued. He's clearly the the master, <laughs> clearly the master that we need. Clear, yeah. yeah. Oh God, yeah. But that it's like it really explains why Jill only got one mainline game, and uh, right. and Chris was in every other fucking one for the yeah, rest. And Chris of has popped up in basically all of them. <laughs> Good <Moron>. Lord. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm just putting it out there. Chris is a moron, he's, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he's a dumb, boulder punching moron, and I will not have <laughs> Resident Evil. Uh, what five spoilers? I don't care. Chris was yeah. on steroids at the time, and he punched a boulder. And it was a bad time in his it was life. A bad time. And I'm and not gonna. It was, it was. It was a bad time in all of our lives, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. So Wesker goes full Bond villain now. Yep. <laughs> Gives the full explanation speech. Nice work, Barry. Take her weapons. Um, <laughs> Caesar. Caesar. Uh, <laughs> so um, Barry, uh, Barry leaves when Wesker tells him to leave. 
and then you know he just explains everything and uh he talks about profit pie the way redfield's been running around mouthing off about conspiracies you think umbrella didn't notice <laughs> i mean it's all great right. he just like yeah. he just he he says that the it's called it's actually the tyrant virus Barry basically didn't leave. That's the whole thing. Is like Barry like just acted like he was leaving. Yeah, and just he just he just hides away a little bit. Yeah, um, and then finally he made up. He, Wesker admits to Jill that he made up the thing about Barry's family being in danger, and that's all it takes for Barry to be like, oh, okay. <laughs> and he just yeah. knocks Wesker. Oh, the- I see. Yes. <laughs> he, mm. Oh, I see. Uh, I could have figured this out before, but I didn't. Um. <laughs> Uh, and then he just knocks Wesker the fuck out. Just knocks him the fuck out. <laughs> finally. Finally. Wesker's finally. been deserving this for a while, and he's finally Very drops long him. long time, in fact. He drops him like a ton of bricks. And that brings us to chapter 19. 19. Oh, boy. We're coming in for a landing. Getting through him. Yeah. Jill basically just watches Barry get taken down. And then and then just kind of forgives him like immediately. She's like, he's like, hey, sorry. And she's like, it's cool. I yeah. get it. I guess I get it. Like, your your kids were in were in quote unquote danger. And he's like, okay, now that he's knocked out cold, I have this other lab to show you. I still don't feel good. Don't worry about it. She goes, well, he seems trustworthy still. Uh, he's, no, he seems fine. <laughs> Um, yeah, everything's okay. They talk about handcuffing Wesker, but they kind of get distracted by that <laughs> before right. like, they like, do it. They're like, we gotta it. tie him up with something, I guess, you know? He's like, we'll get back to it. It's fine. Right. <laughs> and they just leave him. They just leave him. They just leave him. Cold. They leave him because they're looking for, you know, something like a cord or anything to tie him up with. And right. they just get distracted with literally everything else. Um, with basically, they find Tyrant. In a, yeah, in a lab, in a giant tube. They find Tyrant, which here I got. I, I did make a point. I, I again, again, I love these monster descriptions. I think she does a great job with them. Uh, so I've got it was tall, but proportionally correct, at least through the broad muscular torso and long legs. Those parts appeared human. One of its arms had been altered into a cluster of massive dragging claws hanging past its knees, while the other seemed ordinary, if overly large. There was a thick, bloody tumor protruding from where its heart would be, and Jill realized, staring at the bulbous mass, that it was the thing's heart. It was pulsing slowly, expanding and contracting in slow, rhythmic beats. I think that's pretty good. That is pretty good. good. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah, they're just kind of observing the tyrant for now. There had been no sexual, there was no sexual organs. They had been cut away. She looked up. Hey, you know, we don't want him to be distracted. Am I right? Uh, hey, got to stay eyes on the killing prize. Yes. <laughs> she looked up at its face and saw that parts of the flesh there had also been removed. The lips were gone and it seemed to grin broadly at her through the sliced red tissue of its face. All of its teeth exposed. That's um, good stuff. That's good. Stuff. It, it is good stuff. And they also kind of make the yeah. connection that the tyrant was was probably a person once. Yeah. Which is like something that they don't really talk about a lot in other games where it's like, oh, there's this big monster thing. You don't actually realize that the the humanoid monsters were probably they weren't they didn't just come from nowhere. They were probably a guy um, that they turned into this. Right. And I think that's like a nice that's a nice little nod. Yeah. To yeah. It, it attaches the humanity to it. Yeah, I which I like. But don't get used to that. They uh, <laughs> and then they accidentally wake it up. <laughs> Right, right. They start talking about like they're like we got we can't leave this thing. We can't leave this because yeah, they they recognize that it used to be a person, and they're like we can't just leave this thing here. Like, and it's not a like we got to kill it before it kills us. It's like this poor thing should not be alive. It should not be. And so they like find a series of switches that kind of implies that it will, you know, kill it. It'll turn off its life support sure. and everything like that. And as if the thing was reading their mind, it just loses it and starts trying to punch its way through the what, tube. What's what's trying hila- to kill me? What's <laughs> hilarious is that Wesker had already turned off the life support. Uh, right, that's right. <laughs> and the, that's right. The, earlier, we like Wesker's going through his list. He had already done it. Whatever they did, probably turned the life support back on. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> 
Um, so th- and then it's like, no, dude, I wanted to die. <laughs> so then it, it so it, like it, so basically whatever they did, like waked it up, woke it up. And um, now Wesker is gone. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Now he's. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course he is. Of course he is. But not for not for that long, though. Um, he, he doesn't he doesn't have much left um no in, in terms of in terms of lifespan so he stumbles out of the room he has a he has a concussion like 100 percent has a massive oh, concussion totally. can't walk anymore um he and he starts like uh stumbling around the ma2s are like getting on him and uh he's he's trying to like get into the triggering system uh to to turn on the to turn on the the self destruct system because there's a self destruct system, he gets a a really gruesome death. Yeah, it's 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 it is pretty like because you get a for me what bothered me about his death was like his inner monologue, like you hear his final thoughts and that sort of thing, and it's because he's desperate to see he knows the tyrants there, right. And he's desperate to see it kill. Like he's one, like he expresses on more than one occasion in this book, sorrow that he has to execute the tyrant because he wants to watch it work. You know, he's that kind of, you know, sick man. And uh, he had no idea how close he was going to get. So. Yeah. Yeah. He, he actually never gets to see it uh, because it gets like, uh, oh yeah, his, his, he's got blood just running down his face at this point. He can't see it. And his last thought is, I control, let me see the the final line for Wesker. Picture wrap on Wesker. Darkness stole his hopes away, and Wesker thought no more. And I was like, that's a pretty good line. I like pretty that line. Pretty good stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. That's That felt, it felt very like Poe-esque. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Never more. And never more. And Wesker was then, you know, he, he was... He was behind the wall and all he had was a cask of Amontillado. Uh, right, exactly. <laughs> Montresor. The only thing I remember about the cask of Amontillado off the top of my head always is uh, Peter Lorre um, oh. <laughs> playing, um, what's his name? Not Montresor, but the uh, the guy. Um, yeah. I don't even remember that much. <laughs> And he just just him saying in that Peter Laurie voice, Montresor. <laughs> Montresor. <laughs> Get my cask of Amontillado. Yes. <laughs> Good Lord. So for anybody bef- born before, uh, uh, born after depression, 1960. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Peter Lorre is, uh, uh, I, I just love his voice. <laughs> Peter Lorre was one of those actors that like our age, we only knew of him uh, because of Looney Tunes cartoons. I want to say, yeah, like they would always do impressions of him on Looney Tunes and you didn't know who he was, but you'd seen them do this impression of him so frequently that you couldn't help but go, oh, right, that guy. You know, <laughs> right. I don't know how many people associated with a real live actor who walked and talked. But right. Yeah. Yeah. But Bugs sure did a lot of impressions. on. Continuing on with the podcast. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Peter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah. And we get we get a cut to Rebecca, who's by herself again, because Chris is an idiot. Uh, and the radio finally cuts in and she's hearing from the chopper pilot uh, that that he's trying to find them. So the copter uh, pilot. Oh, right. Sorry. The copter pilot. Get to the copter. That famous line. That famous line. Get to uh, the copter. Get to the copter. Uh, and then, like you do, an overhead system starts warning of imminent end times. Five minutes to be precise. And she's still waiting on Chris uh, to get his ass back to her. Right. Yeah. Because they split up because that was a good idea. <laughs> because that was a, it was it was a very good idea. So we we're we're in the end game now. Jill and Barry have run into Chris. The three musketeers have been reunited. Um, they are they all know the same information, so they don't need to talk to each other. <laughs> no, <laughs> no one needs any explanations done. No one needs any explanation. 
they all know Wesker's the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, all there. It, they had four minutes left and they get to the helipad. And then yep. suddenly Tyrant appears. Yeah, with three and a half minutes to spare, Tyrant shows up. Oh, yeah. geez. Tyrant. Does the superhero pose. Superhero poses. Like he, he lands the three point landing with the yep. superhero pose. And yep. uh, he's there and he's there to fuck up their day. Absolutely. Anybody who's played any Resident Evil game knows what happens next. You play the dodge shoot dodge game for a solid two and a half minutes. Yeah, you really just uh, get, get that time eaten up. You shoot when you can. You try to hit the weak spot, all that good stuff. Um, it's usually it's usually a pain in the ass and a little anticlimactic, if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and then and then another Resident Evil trope. Uh, the helicopter, or sorry, the copter pilot drops off a rocket launcher. Now, just, I just saw this and I was wondering, I, I was going to go back and check, but I didn't, um, whether uh, they mentioned the rocket launcher in the beginning when they're talking about all the guns that are on the on the helicopter. I believe they do. OK, I believe they do. Yes, Cause that would be the that would be the true Chekhov's gun. Of, of right. This. Yeah. Chekhov's RPG. Yeah. Chekhov's <laughs> RPG, uh, to be sure. Yeah. Yeah, and they but the the copter pilot and this is I, I've seen this and this happens in a lot of Resident Evil games. Like just at the very end, when you think all is lost, someone throws you a crazy huge gun of some kind, and uh, and they blow the tyrant to pieces uh, with 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 very little ceremony. They're like fuck this guy, and they just blast him apart. Yeah, yeah, he's he's uh, he's food for. He's uh he's a feast for crows now. Right. I, I know you used to be a human being, but fuck off. But yeah, I mean it, there's a real there's a real jump from feeling sorry to him to like, oh shit, kill him. Yeah, which <laughs> I mean, which is very human nature. <laughs> if we're being honest. You feel bad for that big, angry looking, sad Rottweiler at the Humane Society right up until it snaps at you and you're like, oh, oh god, no. Ah, oh, fuck this Never thing. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> so they uh the the copter touches down. They jump into the cab and they get carried away, which leads us to chapter twenty one, the shortest chapter in the entire book, which is just two paragraphs describing the Wesker estate exploding. Spencer estate. Spencer. Oh, it was Wesker estate? I said the Wesker. The estate. Wesker estate. That was the that was the real twist. You find out in the end that it was all owned by Wesker. It was Wesker all along. It was Wesker all along. So in many ways, it blows up and uh, it blows up. There's it's it's gone. Just like at the end of a yep. lot of Resident Evil stories. Uh, yep. There's a big old explosion. That's the one thing yep. you got to guarantee at the end of Resident Evil is uh, there's a big fucking explosion, at least in the original big explosion in the original games. They they kind of backed off the ex the promise of massive explosion in in the recent ones. I don't think there was a. Yeah. Was there a big one in seven? Oh, yeah, kind of there was in at the end uh, of seven ish. Sort of the house. Like, the house wasn't standing by the end. Well, that's true. That's, true. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. Manner of speaking in a manner of speaking. Um, yeah, it was more of a flesh so, explosion. Right. It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't quite the it was not talking about the end of Contra here, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. But uh, and that brings us to the epilogue. And as they fly to safety, we're we're given the POV of Brad. Because our, why not? Because <laughs> why not? Our our chicken shit pilot who uh, who feels regret about leaving them and uh, bemoans the fact that he needs to pee really badly. Yep. And he's also uh, and then he reveals. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, he, he reveals uh, in his monologue, not to them. He doesn't tell them but that he received, received their exact coordinates from a Trent. Ooh. Oh, boy. You know, just, ah, mysterious, the mis road unquote, Trent. Mysteri who we're not going to get conclusion on in this story. I'm sure he's brought up again in the other Resident Evil books by S.D. Perry, which are available from these fine booksellers. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the one near your house. The one online, the that, one that's a little further away from your house, but you like to go there on Sunday afternoons if you're already driving in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So, uh, Kevin, what did what did you think of Resident Evil: The Umbrella Conspiracy? Uh, I it was actually I really liked it overall um, yeah. as an adaptation of a game, which, as much as I love Resident Evil, is um, it's super silly and dumb in like all the right ways. Like it's it it really does its best way, best to um, ground some of the more absurd story elements of resident evil like the like the traps and the puzzles and all that stuff um yeah which works for this specific book it doesn't necessarily explain why those things exist for the rest of the series but the thing is no. <laughs> this this th- this book series was written this was written basically when resident evil 2 had come out um right so <laughs> like you know, I think there was a lot of like, oh, well, you know, that's we're just going to explain it away now and not worry about the fact that Capcom is going to be making these games for another 25 years or so <laughs> forever, forever. Exactly. And they're all going to have the far fetched puzzle solving um, and 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 whatnot. Um, and, and honestly, that's fine. That's fine. You know, it is what it is. And and yeah, I, I agree. I, I think this was a, you know, I think S.D. Perry, she had a l- a big, big task ahead of her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was not going to be an easy thing to adapt. And basically, she had two options. Well, maybe she didn't even have the two options. This is we are going to ask her some questions uh, to uh, to hopefully figure out a little more about how this all worked. But, you know, basically if you're left to your own devices on this one, which I doubt she was, but you basically have the option of trying to remain somewhat true to the source material uh, and make it work in this new format, or you basically just rewrite the whole damn thing. Right. uh, Like they did with the movies. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, she did what she could with the material. uh, And I think she did an admirable job. I think it was pretty fun. I uh, I agree. I think it was it was pretty fun. I think had had the first Resident Evil movie kind of gone in this direction, it actually could have worked. She did a really, uh, really nice job separating out the elements of the story and being able to assign them to different main characters, which is interesting based on like the Resident Evil game. Um, you experience everything as one character on each playthrough. Like it's there's right. it's not a split playthrough like Resident Evil Two. It's either Chris and you do it all, or Jill and you do it all, just uh, in a slightly different order. So yeah, that being said, I think she did an admirable job doing that. That that's not to say that there weren't some really silly moments in the book. Um, some really oh absolutely silly writing. I mean her her the the way she kind of wrote chris he's he's honestly he he was pretty unlikable by the end um i, I, I agree i didn't i didn't give a shit about chris i was like oh man chris could fucking die i don't right i'm, I'm what a done moron. he's a he's he's a moron he's and he's not he's also not doing anything for the second half of the book that's important he's like right. it's like it's it's really Jill's story. Jill is driving the plot forward with her moves and her, her actions. And Chris is just he's trying to figure out how to kill a plant or whatever. Right. And Which honestly, that was that was the one part of the whole book that just frustrated me to no end. Where it was that we've expressed that obviously in this very episode, but it would just man, oh man. Otherwise, I think it did a pretty good job. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So I think if you got, you know, if you got a couple of afternoons or you're going to the beach or some damn thing, you could do worse than, you know, I picked up, uh, I know Kevin likes his, uh, his, his e-readers, uh, yes. for, uh, for his purposes here. I, I like my beat up used paperback copies. And I found this one on eBay for five bucks, you know, which I think is what it was selling for when it was brand new. So yeah, why not? Yeah, it's interesting. I would give this maybe five out of seven stars. Five out of seven. It's a perfect score. Five out of seven. (laughs) (laughs) A really unorthodox rating system you got there. (laughs) (laughs) Out of Kevin's famous seven star review system. (laughs) Seven star review. Um, (laughs) 
no, it's it, it's good. You can pick, still buy it. It's uh, it's everywhere. Um, and if I think they I, have new editions of it too. Yeah, yeah like if you're released this, and if you're a fan of like if you're a moderate Resident Evil fan, I think it's worth reading. It's yeah. not it's not up to date. It's not it's not gonna it's not based on the Resident Evil remake. It's based on the OG Resident Evil. So there's some there's a bunch of plot lines not that are just like not there, but it it's worth it if if you're just looking for something to read as you said phil it if you're at a beach and you just want a book and you just want a book that has kind of like a familiarity to it and that's that's a thing is like wanting to just like wrap yourself in something familiar rather than Mm -hmm. you know start something brand new i i think this is a pretty decent book for for what it's doing And, and speaking as someone who never played uh, the first Resident Evil, like I still got a kick out of it. I played the other ones, uh, and, and and just and it still gave me that familiarity you're talking about. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, so I think um, that's this, great. This was just the first book in uh, Resident Evil series. Maybe we'll come back to the other ones. Maybe we won't. We'll figure that out as we go along. Well, but next, and I, it's in, in a, an interesting note. The second one, uh, I think it's called Caliban Code, yeah. is actually the first all original Resident Evil book. It, it's not based on any of the games. And then the third book in the series is based on Resident Evil. 2. Right. She has, uh, ST Perry got to write two books in this series that were completely original. Um, Caliban yeah. Cove and underworld. Um, while the rest are based on our, our novelizations of, of the games. So eventually I think we'll definitely want to come back yeah. to this. Cause I think it'll be really interesting to see what she did with, an original story. Yeah, I, w- I would be interested in the Caliban Cove book for sure. Yeah, but that's that's going to do it for Resident Evil. Hell yeah, the Umbrella cons- Conspiracy. We're going to be doing Halo, Halo Fall of Reach next. That's the next book, right? Yes, Halo Fall of Reach. Now that should be very interesting because that one, every time you look up, as I have, uh, you know, the best video game novels and stuff like that. This one tops a lot of lists. Mm. So I'm really interested. Yeah, I'm to excited. To, I'm hype. excited to check it out. I'm not a huge Halo guy, but I'm sure it'll be fun. I, I do enjoy myself some like the military sci-fi uh, oh, yeah. genre, um, so to speak. Little Robert Heinlein kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, that kind of that kind of whatnot. All right. Well, that'll do it. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. <laughs>